today we're talking about Tears of the Kingdom. What a surprise. But what I actually want to focus on from the recent screenshots and new trailer is the possibility that the Twilight Realm, or some form of it, maybe a corrupted form, I'm not sure, is returning in Tears of the Kingdom. Now, I want to note, none of what I'm going to talk about today is confirmed facts. This is just observations that I'm making, some loose connections. I'm going to present the evidence, and we'll talk about the possibilities of what this could mean. Obviously, a lot of people debate about where on the timeline Breath of the Wild goes, and hence where Tears of the Kingdom will be, and they're always trying to find evidence to support one thing or another. Most people think there's more evidence for the downfall timeline versus any other, but this isn't a timeline debate. This is just talking about things that we can observe, and... The first obvious one that I think a lot of people think I'm going to bring up, and we might as well get it out of the way, is the idea of there being spirits of dead people from Hyrule. Now, we know this because in Twilight Princess, we had something like this where you could run around uh, the Twilight Realm when it was enveloping Hyrule, so you'd be essentially running around Hyrule itself while enveloped in Twilight, and you would see all the citizens as spirits that would first initially pop up as these little glowing flames. And we have this screenshot where it looks like that very thing is happening, where we're seeing a group of what probably it looks like spirits with glowing flames that we're not near enough to to see the full spirit. So this could suggest that what we're actually seeing in this supposed underground area, as some people have maybe theorized, at least I've seen theories on it, is that this actually could be a part of the game that is enveloped in Twilight. Now, one notable thing about Twilight is in Twilight Princess, the, the big differentiator between the Twilight Realm and everything else was the aesthetic, right? It had a bit of a blowout with the background lighting, a bit of a blurrier look, and one obvious thing besides a slight color palette change was the black uh, little specks that were in the air. And yes, those are all characteristics that we know from the Twilight Realm. We also need to realize that we were dealing with the limitations of the GameCube at the time. So it was mostly, you know, what they could do to make it look way different from an already dark and in, 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 um, brownish looking game, right? Like they needed to make some sort of stark contrast difference. And so they went with the blacks. I'm not sure that that has to be the way the Twilight Realm always is, but that is the only time we've seen the Twilight Realm. So that is notable. But in that screenshot that I'm talking about, what we do see are a lot of other specs going on. Some of them square in shape, some of them not. And all those particle effects going on could literally be part of the Twilight Realm. Now, again, high speculation here doesn't necessarily mean anything at all, but it is something that, hey, it exists. So I thought it was worth mentioning. But we see these particle effects in other areas, including some black specks. Uh, there's that scene, remember, where uh, you know, he's Ganondorf presumably has the Blood Moon sort of explode and send out all these enemies. And there's a screenshot that Nintendo provided that shows not only the red particle effects that we've seen from the Blood Moon, we're also seeing black specks around, which again makes me kind of think of the Twilight Realm. And as we go on through the screenshots, we'll see another one where it looks like a Blood Moon's happening, or maybe it's not happening, I have no idea. Uh, but we see, again, a bunch of particle effects and a couple little black specks. Again, this sort of... Uh, anecdotal evidence doesn't necessarily mean that the Twilight Realm is back. Of course, it's a pretty loose connection beyond the spirits. The spirits uh, are probably the biggest indicator. Now, they might not be spirits. We also have a scene um, where Link jumps to supposedly save Zelda at the end. And again, we see the red, but also black specks. So it's just something to note that it seems to be a consistent theme that where the red things are, the black specks are. Uh, one other notable connection that I don't think anyone is talking about is if you ever go watch footage of the Twilight Realm, it's a bunch of sky islands. Nobody really seems to realize or talk about this because every time we, we think about the sky islands the obvious connection people make is skyward sword 
But in reality, the entire Twilight Realm itself, not when Twilight enveloped Hyrule, but the actual realm of Twilight has a bunch of sky islands. It's just a bunch of islands floating in the middle of, of nowhere. So it is notable that the fact that we do have sky islands could actually might indicate something to do with the Twilight Realm possibly coming into our realm, as it were. And why would that be the case? And if that's the case, how did the Twilight Realm come out of its realm? And what the hell has happened to Midna? And I don't know. I don't have an answer to this. See, the Twilight Realm exists in all of the timelines. We just only see it in the one. We don't really know how to access that realm without the Mirror of Twilight or without, obviously, some being bringing Twilight onto Hyrule. So I'm not really sure how it would connect. And there's a lot of story elements we could get into with this. Um, you know, if Midna comes back, what does that mean? Does Midna help in the adventure? Uh, is this something that Nintendo's holding back intentionally? Because as Kit Ellis, former Nintendo employee, put it every time he talks about this game, he thought Nintendo was going to hold back a lot with the marketing on this game and just show us very similar like teases and the brux of the big stuff is just, hey, play the game and you'll see. So... I, this is all just speculation. I don't know that there that any of this holds any weight. We can't even confirm that those flames are obviously spirits because we can't play the game. They could be something else. We know Link has that glowing um, green uh, vial thing on his side. Maybe those things are related to tears and collecting flame tear things to put into the vials. So it could mean something else. And again, that's the biggest point of, to, of the Twilight connection. But I just kind of wanted to throw it out there because I didn't really see anyone talking that much about this and just see what you guys thought about it. Again, I'm not a massive Zelda theorist, although you would think I am if you watch our live streams. Anyone who watches our live streams when I'm talking about this game knows that I come up with a billion different theories in relation to the potential story and all this crazy stuff. But I just kind of wanted to throw out some Twilight Princess stuff just to, just to see what sticks, just to see what you guys think. I don't necessarily think that this is 100% a fact. I think there's just some scant evidence that maybe we're ignoring. And when it comes to Zelda, that scant evidence usually means something what it means though i guess for now is left up to our imaginations anyways guys i will catch you guys in that next video you guys let me know what you think about this down in the comments below fat give me your favorite current personal theory about tears of the kingdom after the most recent trailer i'm very interested to hear what you guys have to say about that and big shout out to just my entire community for inspiring me to continue to pump out these tears of the kingdom videos I, I know you guys are as excited as I am, and honestly, it's refreshing that even if we don't have a ton of new gaming news or rumors or leaks and stuff, that we could continue to talk about my most anticipated game of all time. I'll catch you guys in that next video.